The YouTube struggle is real. Hey guys, Omar here. I actually uploaded a video and then had to take it down because it had all these audio issues. You would think with 100,000 subscribers, I have all this stuff figured out, but no, apparently no. <laughs> so my microphone apparently was maybe faced in the weird direction where it was getting echo or some kind of phase issues. So certain people couldn't hear my video, even though I could. It sounded strange, but I still could hear the video on my phone, on my computer, but some people couldn't hear it. So I took it down and it was the only audio track I had. So in this video, we're gonna recap that video, which was in a re-unboxing. So in this video, this is a re-re-unboxing experience. All right, I started the video by explaining why I rebought the 23 millimeter F2 weather resistant Fujifilm lens. And uh, the first thing I talked about is that my one problem with this lens was that at close minimum focus distance at F2, the lens was a little hazy. And then I did a cool little flashback effect. But if you tried this at F2, let me show you. I, no matter how I moved, the, the camera registered as focused, you get the hazy haze. After that, I talk about the 35 millimeter F2, how I still recommend the 35 millimeter as your first Fujifilm Prime, simply because it's a little cheaper than the 23. It also is weather resistant, it's a little smaller. It's also better for portraits, which I enjoy doing, so the 35 millimeter F2 is what I usually recommend. It also can focus close at minimum focus distance and give you sharp results, unlike other lenses. However, the 35 is a little too tight if you want a general purpose street walk around lens. 35 is a 50 millimeter equivalent on the Fujifilm system. And doing street photography with a 50 is just a little too tight, especially if you're work walking, on the, working on the street. <laughs> especially if you're walking on the street, it's just a little too tight. I mentioned the 16 millimeter 1.4, but that's just a little too wide sometimes. So the only 22, 23 millimeter that I had at my disposal was the Zonlai Cheapy 22 millimeter 1.8. And I love shooting with this lens. It's so much fun because it's super sharp. It can get very close, super minimum focus distance sharpness, uh, wide open, which I love. So it gives you sharp results. Uh, the only strange thing, and I mentioned this in the video, was that sometimes you get like caramel colors and uh, that's pretty much on par with if you go, sometimes if you get food, uh, lenses that are not Fujifilm, you'll get some strange colors. So one of the reasons I wanted the 23 millimeter Fujifilm was to kind of stick with the same glass. Now the Zonlai lens does live on my Fujifilm Noir because of those weird colors. Sometimes I like to shoot it in black and white. And so I like those results, but I wanted an autofocus lens. Uh, whoa, when male attacks. Okay, what's next? We then did a little budget unboxing of the lens. Uh, I did a great Flossie Carter joke. Pluck them and follow them. <laughs> I know. Now that's ruined. And I talked about the Viltrox 23 millimeter 1.4. If you're on a budget, that's a pretty good lens to try. Although the Viltrox is a little cheaper, you still get great results with it. Also, I don't love that the aperture wheel has no clicks to it. I'm not a fan of that at all. I actually prefer that. And then we did another asthma joke. All right, so here's the 23 millimeter F2. I showed close-ups of what the lens looks like on the larger cameras, like X-T3, X-T2, X-T1, X-T4. And it's just perfectly balanced on these cameras. A nice 23 millimeters. Also the X-Pro line looks great with this lens. Here's the 16 millimeter on the Fujifilm X-T20. I feel like it's like <laughs> completely so top heavy and ridiculous. So they have a 16 millimeter 2.8, by the way, which would work better with the Fujifilm system. Uh, and here's the 23 on the Fujifilm Noir. Then I discussed the other reason that got me to uh, pick up the 23 and I suggested something that you should do. I've been going through my old metadata on Lightroom and just picking one lens. I'll filter all my photos via lens and just to see the, the photographs that I get from that lens. And I found that I enjoyed the photos from the 23 millimeter lens when they were environmental portraits or they were street photos. 
Uh, so that is kind of like what the impetus was to pick this lens up again. I'm going to shoot it at 5.6 f8. And then I wondered in the video, does the lens still do the hazy haze? And I ran these tests. Then when I came back from the tests, I said that it still has the hazy haze problem. I was super, super <laughs> impressed by the, you know, the Zonlai lens close up is just like so sharp, especially when I took a picture of the, the watch. By the way, I picked this up. This is a little Islander watch from Mark, islandwatches.com. I realize if I'm shooting stuff close up, I'm just gonna stop down to f4 or so, but my goal is to use the lens more as a 5.6 f8. I also argued that people sometimes like defend the lens for being hazy close up, saying it's not designed to do that. That's a bunch of BS. The lens can't do that. It has some kind of flaw because the 35 kind of has the same construction and it can do that. And all the other Fujifilm lenses don't have that problem except maybe the X100 series cameras at F2, the earlier ones, and that was fixed with the X100V. So stop defending the lens close up. It's not good close up. So with that said, I'm excited to use it the way it's meant to be used, is I'm gonna keep it at 5.6 F8. I just wanted a 23 millimeter that has autofocus, that is from Fujifilm, that's weather resistant, that I could use for street photography, and I'll be shooting it at 5.6 F8. And I just wanted to bring that budget unboxing to you. However, the technical issues with YouTube and audio, I still haven't figured it out yet. All right, I'll see you guys next time.